In this video, I will explain the logical fallacy called the appeal to nature. I'll begin with the general form, explain why it is a mistake, and use some examples of people making this sort of mistake. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you will be able to spot and deal with this fallacy. And if not, well, it is only natural for people watching this video to like it and subscribe to the channel. So hit the like button and the subscribe button. The appeal to nature is an informal logical fallacy that exploits the positive connotations of the word nature. Essentially, it equates the word nature with good. The general form is X exists in nature, therefore X is good. Or the opposite form Y does not exist in nature, therefore Y is bad. The conclusions here are fallacious. The fact that something happens in nature or is considered natural is not sufficient to claim that it is good, bad, right or wrong. First of all, what do we even mean by nature or natural? It is a vague word that can have many different meanings to different people. And it is this vagueness, together with its generally positive connotations, that are exploited here. For example, does man-made mean that it is not natural? Is a polyester shirt unnatural? After all, it is made from a man-made material. What then of the cotton t-shirt? Cotton is natural, but the t-shirt is man-made. What about clothes in general? Is it natural for humans to even wear clothes? This mess comes from the vagueness of the words nature and natural, and it is because of this vagueness that one can make anything good or bad just by bending the definition of nature. Consider the case of someone dying from natural causes. Would you say that it is good that they died? I doubt it. The presence or absence of nature, however we define it, in the case of someone's death, has no bearing on whether the death was right or wrong. Let's look at some examples of people making this mistake. Two more homeopathic lockers, please. <laughs> Whoa, that's strong stuff. Homeopathy is a system of alternative medicine. It is based on the idea that like cures like, and so-called homeopathic remedies can be suggested for a range of ailments. A producer of such remedies might say, our homeopathic remedies are natural, unlike modern pharmaceuticals, which poison our bodies. Our natural remedies work with nature to make you feel better. Notice how the statement fails to describe what it means by nature and natural. It is essentially saying that homeopathic remedies are natural, therefore they work, or at least perform better than modern pharmaceuticals. This is a fallacy. The nature argument does not support the conclusion. Now, a strong homeopathic remedy might actually be chemically indistinguishable from water. And so you could claim that it is natural. But even if everyone agreed that it is natural, why should this affect the efficacy of the treatment? If you want to believe this conclusion, you need evidence and better arguments. The next example concerns animals. In this clip, a male lion from outside the pride takes an interest in the female lion. As the lioness's mate is not there at the moment, this male lion decides to have his way with her. The lioness knows that rejecting him will likely mean her death. As you can see, animals do things that we consider to be strange. Consider the following statement. Male lions rape female lions. It is natural. Humans should do the same because it is natural. Is this a valid argument? As you saw in the film, lions actually do this, so it does exist in nature. Does it then follow that this is a good thing or that humans should do the same? No, the fact that it exists in nature does not mean that it is good. There is no link between the two. The fact that a lion does something does not mean that a human should do the same thing. Let's move on to the final example. Right. What do I do? Yes? 
What do I do? Nothing, dear. You're not qualified. Leave it to us. What's that for? That's the machine that goes bing. You see, that means your baby is still alive. The last example concerns giving birth. Some countries and cultures have the concept of a natural birth. You might wonder what constitutes a natural birth. When is a birth not natural? Well, let's use the following definition: a natural birth is one without medical intervention. Basically, no C-sections, no inducements, no drugs. It might even take place in a shallow pool. Is such a birth, a natural birth, better? Well, it depends on the situation. Medical interventions normally have some rationale behind them. For example, you might want to delay the birth to get the baby into a better position. The rationale for a medical intervention will normally be based on the health of the mother and baby. So avoiding all medical interventions is a risk. Equally, a natural birth in a birthing pool, for example, might be less painful experience for the mother. So it really depends on the individual situation. But it is a mistake to say that just because the birth is natural, that this must always be the best possible way to do it. When you see someone use this fallacy, ask them what they actually mean by nature or natural. Consider whether this property has any relevance to the conclusion. If not, ask them to provide a better reason for their conclusion. As always, politely point out the mistake they have made. Avoiding logical fallacies will make for better discussions. Well, that concludes the video. Hopefully, now you have a better understanding of this fallacy.